So let's have a look at the connectivity of a major thalamic nucleus in a bit more detail. And the connectivity are both with the cortex and with some other nuclei. As I just mentioned, the projection neurons in a major thalamic nucleus are excitatory. The neurons in the TRN are inhibitory. Most of the thalamic connectivity with the cortex goes to or from pyramidal neurons in layers 4 and 6. The thalamocortical neurons target pyramidals in layer 4 and pyramidals in layer 6 target back to the thalamocortical neurons. So since there's a connectivity from layer 4 uh, via a couple of other layers down to layer 6, there's a positive feedback loop between the thalamic nucleus and its corresponding cortical area. Axons between the thalamus and the cortex all pass through the TRN, and these axons drop side branches onto the thalamic reticular neurons. The thalamic reticular neurons then make inhibitory connections back just onto the thalamocortical projection neurons. There are several other structures that also make strong connections onto this loop, including the basal ganglia, the cerebellum, and the basal forebrain. The basal ganglia gets a lot of input from layer 5 of the cortex and strongly inhibits the thalamocortical projection neurons. There's also excitatory connectivity back from the midline and intralaminar nuclei of the thalamus to the basal ganglia. There's also strong excitatory connectivity from the cerebellum directly into the thalamus. Finally, neurons in the basal forebrain target the thalamic reticular neurons, and this projection includes both excitatory and inhibitory components. So let's have a closer look at the role of the thalamic reticular neurons. As we saw, these neurons get inputs from both the cortex and the thalamus. So if there's strong activity both ways, they'll tend to be activated. They're GABAergic and target the thalamocortical neurons. However, the effect of stimulating these thalamic reticular neurons is to generate oscillations in the 40 hertz or gamma band in the corresponding cortex. For example, if neurons in the part of the TRN corresponding with the auditory cortex are stimulated, there's a burst of activity in the auditory cortex and you can analyze this activity to determine the power present at different frequencies. And when you do that, there's a strong peak around 40 to 50 hertz, which is the gamma band in the EEG. Stimulation of the TRN corresponding with the auditory cortex doesn't produce that activity in other cortices like the somatosensory cortex. Oscillations in various frequency bands are very characteristic of the thalamocortical loop. And some of the prominent bands found in EEG measurements when the brain is awake are beta, gamma and theta. The gamma band is connected with the TRN. And interestingly, the basal forebrain that also connects to the TRN is important in generation of the theta band. 